Hello everyone, Sally here and welcome back to another Bedrock Edition tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to build a very simple, cheap, and very reliable zero tick kelp farm for your Bedrock Edition worlds. This kelp farm will produce you about 23,000 kelp per hour just by using 16 kelp plants, which is really, really good. No bone meal or cheats or anything required, just pure vanilla survival taking advantage of some game mechanics. Now, this farm is also completely modular and expandable as well, so you can actually build like, you know, 12 of these farms right next to each other to actually get like 12 times the rates. You can literally do anything that you want with this farm it's extremely flexible so hopefully you guys do enjoy building this in your worlds this is a follow-up tutorial to my previous zero tick farm tutorial where I show you how to build a zero tick a sugarcane cactus and a bamboo farm although throughout the entire making of that video I completely forgot that kelp even existed so there's a derp on my part uh, so if you want to know how to build those three different types of farms or if you want to have a full explanation of the mechanics of how exactly this form of zero ticking works then of course go watch that video since this is just a follow-up so this kelp farm is of course a little bit hard to demonstrate just like the other zero tick farms mostly because this has to be far away from the player and halfway in unloaded chunks hence why we have this little minecart rail here we are loading and unloading half of the farm to actually zero tick and force these kelp plants to grow but if we just stop that minecart and then fly over here real quick you can see that we have uh quite a bit of kelp just like <laughs> just launching on out of there so we don't have any in our inventory and as you can see we just picked up five stacks of kelp just from running the farm for like less than a minute if you run this farm for exactly one minute you'll get six stacks of kelp which is really really decent and of course this produces 23,000 kelp per hour so again thank you to 77 tigers for actually discovering this mechanic in the first place and then also sharing it with the wider minecraft community as a whole which was a pretty awesome of you we all love these zero tick farms and this is like a great method of actually zero ticking so thank you very much 77 tigers so that really is all there is to know about this zero tick kelp farm if you want to know all the resources that you need to actually build this exact farm right here there will be a materials listed down in the description of the video for your use also down in the description will be a link to this chunk border resource pack this works on most devices windows 10 and mobile as well so just click that link it'll download and then you can just install it from there pretty straightforward if you're on a console then you will not be able to download it because consoles can't download things from the interwebs so you will have to find another method of actually marking out your chunks marking out chunks on any platform is extremely easy and there are millions literally millions of ways of doing it so to get started with your build the first thing that you want to do is check your world's simulation distance if you are playing on a realm your simulation distance will always be four if you're playing on a server you will have to ask your admins what the simulation distance is and if you are playing in a single player just go to your settings go to your game settings and then scroll down underneath your world seed and you will see simulation distance by default this is for chunks now a simulation distance is the actual distance around the player that the game is actually loading it is completely independent from a render distance so even though we can see those trees and those contraptions over there they are not actually loaded nothing will ever happen in those chunks over there it's basically frozen in time and this is what we call unloaded now the reason why it is very important to figure out your simulation distance is again because this farm it needs to be halfway into your unloaded chunks and halfway in your loaded chunks as well so for instance with a four chunk assimilation distance the world is going to load four chunks in every direction from the chunk the player is in so this is the chunk that we are in that's one two three four and then it just kind of goes out in a diamond from there so those chunks marked in gray are unloaded and these ones over here would all be loaded when we're standing in that chunk there'll be a graph on screen right now to help you understand this as you can see it's basically just a giant diamond and that is again for the four chunk simulation distance so once you have figured out your actual simulation distance what you want to do is you want to mark out the chunk that you're going to be afking in just make sure it's in a nice safe area this can be at any height in the world pretty much anywhere in the entire world as well overworld or in dimension of course and then from there you want to mark out 
however many chunks your simulation distance is. So our sim distance is four chunks. So that's one chunk and then two, three, and then this would be our fourth chunk where the majority of our farm is going to be. The half of the farm that needs to be unloaded is going to be five chunks out from our unloaded area. So for instance, if you had a simulation distance of six, then you would go out by one, two, three, four, five, six. This would be where half your farm is. And then your plants would be in the seventh chunk. I also wanna mention again that even if you don't have this resource pack to actually mark out your chunk borders, finding chunks is extremely easy and it's really not a daunting task. Once you find one, you can mark out the rest very easily because they are in a massive grid. Uh, but anyway, now that we are ready to build, you want to go to your actual AFK chunk. As you can see, this is going to be where, you're, where we are AFKing. You want to line yourself up with the center of the chunk and face of where you want your farm. Our farm is going to be going over there. So what you want to do now is go three blocks into your first chunk and place down a block. Place down a redstone block with a powered rail and then a detector rail right there and then five actual powered rail, normal rail, and then one powered rail, saw a block, and then a lever. This is going to be your actual AFK rail line. As you go back and forth across this chunk border, you're going to be loading the part of the farm that actually has your plants in it to harvest them, and then when you're back over here in your main AFK chunk, that's when you're actually going to be zero ticking your farm and then updating your plants to have them grow. And now we need to run some redstone lines going all the way to to our final loaded chunk. As you can see, I placed down some little lines of blocks just to see what we're doing. This goes all the way to the final chunk that's gonna be loaded as we are in our AFK chunk. And we're gonna place down a redstone line on each of these. So go ahead and replace your detector rail with a lever. And then that's going to help you place down your redstone lines. This is going to go all the way until the redstone power runs out. Your first repeater is going to be on four ticks for your left side. And then place this down until it runs out. It's going to be a one tick repeater. Your next redstone line is going to keep on going into a one tick repeater. And then we're just going to leave this redstone line right there. We'll pick that up once we start building the actual farm itself. And now let's go ahead and work on the right side of redstone line. So go ahead and take this one all the way down. You need another four tick repeater right here. Run it down again. We need a three tick repeater this time. And then finally a one tick repeater right there. So just don't touch it. And then again, we're just going to leave that redstone line right there. To start your farm, what you want to do is get yourself a row of sticky pistons, 16 blocks long, of course. And these guys should be in your final loaded chunk. When you're standing in your FK chunk, this is going to be the final loaded chunk around the player. And they should be facing into your first unloaded chunk of the world. And what these guys are going to have is just some solid blocks on their face. Any form of solid block will do. And now you want to get yourself a little bit of glass. Or really, this can be whatever you want. Glass, it just looks nice and professional. And we're just going to bring that up by a couple blocks and just surround the entirety of that in glass. We also want to get ourselves some water and make sure to fill up this entire thing with water sources. So place a water bucket on every other block. And now all of that is water sources. The next step is to get yourself some pistons and place those facing into your unloaded chunks again. This is what's actually going to be harvesting all of your kelp. And now we can surround this in another layer of glass. So now we can turn off our chunk borders resource pack as it's no longer going to be useful to us. And it's just kind of in the way. As long as you've got your pistons and your water actually properly chunk aligned, then you'll be doing just fine. And now we need to make a little bit of an extension on the front. So place two of your blocks right there. Go all the way along the front and then two more blocks right there as well. This is going to be where all of your items are going to be falling into your lower water streams to be sent into your collection area. Now this front extension does need to be built up to be four blocks tall in total. So our front is now completely built up and now we need to work on the back as well. So to go ahead and place in a block right there, another line of blocks right above all of your pistons and one more block right there and bring this up by another layer on your sides and your backside too just to keep it lossless all of the items from your farm are going to be going down into these lower water streams speaking of those we now need to place signs on every single one of these front blocks to prevent the upper water sources from flowing downwards and messing with your water streams and once you've done that you need to place a water source on each and every single one of these blocks above your pistons those should all flow across 
and push all of the kelp that you're going to be harvesting into this area. So now we need to go down into our little trough and we need to mine one block down into the ground and this is where we're going to be installing our first water streams. So in the ground you want to place down either packed ice or blue ice. Packed ice works totally fine. You can do blue ice if you want but it's not going to make any difference literally at all. And either way you need to place a water source here in the far left side and also a water source on the far right side as well. That's going to push all of your items to the center. You're going to have a 2x2 two two center to choose from so I'm going to choose this block right here as the proper center. Mine down by another block and now we need to just continue this water stream forward and out through the back of the farm. So place down another water source right there and now any items that actually get pushed into these water streams and harvested from your farm will end up over there. So you can now run this water stream into whatever you want. You can run it all the way back to your AFK chunk if you want to have your storage over there. Or you can just run it into a simple item elevator and a simple item sorter if you want to. Whatever works for you, storage is completely subjective and everyone wants to do their storage differently. However, keep in mind, you will need a triple hopper speed storage system. This produces 23,000 items per hour. Hoppers can only transfer 9,000 items per hour. So if you, for instance, run this water stream over three item filters that all collect kelp, then that would be a triple speed sorter and that would work just fine. Before we install our redstone, make sure to place a solid block right here next to the blocks that your kelp is going on and you need to place one of these on either side. That way none of your water ever leaks out of your farm. So to install your redstone, all you need to do is place a line of solid blocks behind your lower and your upper pistons as well. And then on top of those solid blocks, it just place down a line of redstone dust. Your lower line of blocks also needs redstone dust on top of it too. And now we can actually install the redstone for our lower bit. Now you wanna run this right side redstone line into the bottom. So run this redstone up to about there. We're gonna place an observer facing that piece of redstone dust and then another observer facing that one. That's gonna make it so that our lower pistons pulse twice every time we activate this redstone line, which is going to help with the rates of the farm. You also want to place another piece of redstone dust right there. Now, of course, as you can see, that's only powering a single piston. So go ahead and place in one more repeater. And now all of those guys are getting powered. So the upper wiring is actually much simpler. Just place two blocks right there with a repeater on one tick and then another piece of redstone dust. And then just kind of staircase this down, run the redstone line up there. And as you can see, all of those pistons are now powered. So go ahead and replace your lever that's been over here for ages, again, with your detector rail. And now you can actually go ahead and plant in your kelp. So your kelp just goes on all of those blocks that are in front of your sticky pistons. Just place in a single kelp and that'll be just fine. So now our kelp farm is actually done. What you can do is hop into the minecart, flick the lever, and then we should see all of that stuff activate. Now, if any of your crops pop off of the blocks when they shouldn't be, then you may need to extend this rail line by a couple blocks. So just add a couple more rails to it. You'll be fine. You may also need to tinker around with your actual repeater delays, possibly add more delay or less if you have a much larger simulation distance. But as you can see, we are getting a bunch of kelp. You can see it when we actually uh, stop at this block. There's a little bit of kelp jumping up there. So now if we go ahead and stop this thing, then we can see what's happening. Also, another note, you always want to turn off that lever and exit the minecart when you're actually at this block. Never exit the minecart when you're on this side. That will guarantee to break all of your plants off. But anyway, with that little note out of the way, let's go see what we got. And as you can see, we got ourselves a fair amount of kelp down here. Three stacks, not too shabby. So as I mentioned in the intro, this is of course a modular and expandable farm. You could stack this thing going all the way from bedrock all the way up to world height if you wanted to. And you can also make this thing up to 48 blocks wide. Because the area loaded around the player is a diamond shape, we technically can build in that chunk, this one, and that one as well. And then, yeah, basically that's all there is to it. 
You can also mix and match these farms so you could have a kelp, a sugarcane, a bamboo, and a cactus farm all in a row and they would all work just fine. Really, you can do whatever you want. It's extremely flexible and just kind of get crazy with it. Make some insane contraptions and just have fun with it, you know? If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about the zero tick kelp farm, then of course let me know in the comment section down below. Always trying to help you guys out as best as I possibly can. And also definitely check out the previous zero tick farm tutorial where I show you how to make a zero tick sugarcane cactus and a bamboo farm all in one video it is a triple tutorial of doom and like check it out there's also a lot more details on all these mechanics in that video otherwise if you have enjoyed this video today then please do leave a like maybe share it around with your friends so they can enjoy it too and if you're new here and you want to see more stuff like this in the future then consider subscribing but i'll see all of you guys down in the comment section and in the next one thank you so much for watching and then there was silence